WCON 1170 Radio and Star Vision Cable Channel 16 are pleased to present We Should Know, hosted by J.W. Simmons, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The name of the show is We Should Know. We're coming to you on WCLN 1170 uh, Star Vision and also Star TV Channel 16, 2.30 to 3.30 on Tuesdays. This show is replayed at 7 p.m. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday if you want to take another look at what we've done on Tuesday. Also, we're simulcast with 1170 Radio right here in Clinton, so you may be driving down the road listening to us. We certainly hope on one of these mediums uh, you're picking us up. We also are reprinted in the Samson Weekly newspaper with a summation. I want to thank all of those folks for looking at us last week. We had a lot of double header last week. We had, uh, we had a couple of folks in that everybody seems to want to hear about this time of year, and that's the superintendents of school, Stuart Blunt, and of course interim superintendent Mike Warren was with us, and we were at the radio station, which was a change for us over the past two years. We've been coming to you from the studio, but we decided to do that from the radio station. We also had Dr. Alex Huff with you on Wednesday and Thursday evening at 7 p.m., so we hope you enjoyed that as well. Today, we have a very exciting program, and I'm so pleased to have Lucy Lockamy with us. Lucy, you're a director, actor. Uh, you've, mm -hmm. you've done a little bit of it all, and as I read over some of the things uh, that you've done, you've been out to Nebraska and got a master's degree in and, and this whole process of things we call theater and uh, <laughs> acting, and you know, you've got an undergraduate from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. But let's start out with a little bit of, uh, about you, and uh, you're a Clinton uh, young lady, um, and your father's well-known here, a prominent attorney, Tim Howard, known Tim for a long time, highly respected attorney. Uh, tell us a little bit about you and how you got in this whole thing called acting and directing and all these things you do. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it started here. It started in Clinton. Uh, I, I can't even really imagine being young and not wanting to be an actor. I can't, I can't remember what that was when I didn't feel like that. But I think I did my first play when I was eight, I think eight, or eight to ten. And it was called On Broadway, and it was with the Samson Community Theater. And that was it. That was it. From then on, I just wanted to continue. So throughout the years, as I got older, during the summers and throughout high school, I would always act in the community theater productions from Oklahoma to, uh, oh, what was, there was one called The Best Little Christmas Pageant Ever. That was one of my favorites. Um, some Shakespeare at, at Clinton High School and then you know to act, I decided that I actually wanted to do this as a career so that's when I went to UNC at Chapel Hill and got my degree there my Bachelor of Arts in, in theater mm -hmm. and then I didn't stop there I uh, wanted to hone my skills really and go to graduate school so I got my Master of Fine Arts in Acting um, at the University of Nebraska. Huskerville. Huskerville. They have great football. And cold winters. Oh yeah that was cold. It was cold. Yeah. I mean it was that was probably we the We don't worst know time. cold here do we? <laughs> if, if you would have seen me in the winter time I ha you could bear, you could see my face and then around it was this big poofy uh, fur looking thing yeah. and then my coat went all the way down to my ankles. It's just so folks know, that's the area of the country that if skin is exposed for too long, you're in serious trouble. Yeah, yeah-ish, yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I'd say, um, you know, it's it's not too bad. It's but, not sub-zero. Right, it's not sub-zero, unless you go out maybe at four in the morning. Yeah, Windshield. Dead winter, Windshield. yeah. That, then that's sub-zero. Mm-hmm. The question is, as you went through that process, and now we're talking about the University of North Carolina. First mm -hmm. of all, let's back up a minute. And as you looked at the whole area of theater art, now you, you come from a family, uh, you're very well educated, uh, attorney kind of family. Uh, what did uh, mom and dad say when you said, look, I want to go into theater? Well, well, they were, they were great, really. They, they, they really supported that? Yes, yes. Yeah. They, they, they wanted me to go to a liberal arts college where mm -hmm. I would be exposed to the gamut of education, mm -hmm. you know, from, from astronomy to chemistry to English to history, you know, all. And really, all that's what that first four years is anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's exposure more than yes. anything else. Yes. And, and they were very supportive of, of me just kind of 
following my bliss. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> um, but also realistic, you mm -hmm. know, saying, okay, well, you know, you need a minor and, you know, theater is a tough world. Yeah. Know that. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then it, and they, they were equally supportive of graduate school because that, that, that really, graduate school really is solidifying um, your potential in the theater mm -hmm. because it opens up so many real world jobs like teaching. I right. teach now at right. the college level right. and if I didn't have my master's I, I wouldn't be qualified to, to teach. Mm -hmm. So you know going to grad school was definitely more grounded mm -hmm. than maybe having just a BA and mm -hmm. saying I'm going to New York. Right, right. <laughs> Goodbye mommy, you know, yeah, and then becoming a waitress essentially. You got some in New specific York. academic skill sets that you have right. in place. Right. Yes. Why yes. Nebraska? Well, it was a very interesting process. You have to audition for grad school because I got my masters in, in acting. Hmm. And so they had to see how you acted, of course, you know, before, before you go to graduate school. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, in order to accept you into their program. And so there was a big cattle call process that uh, pe people all over the nation went to. You could either go to New York, to Chicago, or to LA to, to audition mm -hmm. for grad schools. And mm -hmm. the theaters, theater schools all over the country would go to each different city and just see tons and hundreds and hundreds of people auditioning to get in their program. One of the reasons these programs are so popular is because a lot of them offer um, reduced reduce tuition, mm -hmm. sometimes a free ride if you get into these programs because they're very, very small. So um, I, I auditioned in, in New York in this big Broadway studio. It was incredibly daunting because, <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm still, I was still a small town girl. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was the small town girl in college and I was still a small town girl going to New York. Right, right. And um, so I auditioned in, in front of <clears throat> probably about a hundred different schools and Nebraska offered me the best the best deal. They, mm. they gave me a full ride to wow. graduate school um, and to actually get a stipend while I was there. So I thought, well, okay, let's yeah, we, we try We call that it. a no-brainer. Yeah, yeah, let's try it. Let's, yeah. let's go yeah. for Nebraska. And, and that's what I did. I just packed up and my then boyfriend, who's now my husband, mm -hmm. Um, went with me and we said let's let's see what's out there let's explore and it was you know it was a perfect time to do that when I did to give him a little bit of uh, I guess credit here in Clinton and uh, also maybe a little bit of promotion he's an mm -hmm. attorney as well he is uh -huh. and uh, he has an office here in Clinton so now did you meet him in Nebraska no, no, strangely. So yeah, tell us about that, and then we'll get into s some more substantive things. But I want, oh, folks, right. to, I want yeah. folks to really get to know you a little bit yeah. and understand the energy and passion you've got mm -hmm. for this whole subject. Well, he is from Spivey's Corner, okay. the Mingo area. Mm -hmm. So, But we had never met, and he went to UNC as well. Mm -hmm. We never met there. He was in the theater program. He, he uh, focused on playwriting. Mm -hmm. So we never had similar classes, and I know we had similar friends but we never met until the last month of of our senior year and I was dating one of his friends then I dated another one of his friends and then <laughs> I got to him he was the best uh, it has its way with us <laughs> yeah and so um, we we dated and then when it was time for me to audition for grad schools and time for me to choose one and I chose Nebraska um, you know, we were so in love. He mm -hmm. said, well, I'm coming with you. Yeah. Let's go forth through well, you, this life together. You certainly have to appreciate his uh, passion, concern, and, and care mm -hmm. uh, for you. That says a lot. He was feeling to, willing to follow you to a cold climate. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we have, he's, he's wonderful. And so, and so then he decided to go to law school in Nebraska. So, so he got his degree there, and then, and then we knew we wanted to move closer to home, and we wanted uh, to be near our family. Mm -hmm. And so, he shut up, set up shop here, and mm -hmm. I had, I had a baby right after we moved back. Mm -hmm. Who, and he's now two in a few well, months. Well, congratulations! Thank you. Yeah. That's, Thank a, you. that's a that's an entire blessing there within itself. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, so this whole transition has has moved you to a, I guess, a depth not only of understanding it, but here, here as you mentioned, your husband's not only an attorney, but he's also a playwright within himself. Mm -hmm. Here, you are an actor, a director, 
teach undergraduate uh, in college level in acting and theater and, mm -hmm. and all those kinds of things. Uh, a quick question, and, and I want to try to get this in before we have to go to our first break, but a, but a quick question is that we look at, at, at acting and theater as one of the huge arenas of the arts as when right. we look at that. We have a huge calling in, the, in this community with dance. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we are fortunate to have a, a small community theater here. Yeah. Do you yeah. see that growing? Do you see, uh, over the, your experience uh, in this community, the theater growing, the community theater, and other aspects of acting and, and theatrical performance? I do, because um, just, I mean, in the 10 years since I've been gone, from high school until now, I have seen Clinton grow immensely, mm -hmm. you know, not only new businesses, but um, younger people are moving back. There's just, a, there's, it seems to be thriving, mm -hmm. really, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And one of the big key factors that you'll see in thriving communities is the presence of the arts. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, think, I think theater only has, you know, to go up from mm -hmm. here. The community theater has just done some wonderful, amazing things lately. And you know the the dance companies are still going strong, mm -hmm. and we've got the Samson Arts Council who supports a lot of visual artists mm -hmm. continually, and then you have my theater company, and I, it's exciting really because I, I've had tons of people come up to me after a show I've done or a show I've been in or even a show that I haven't been or mm -hmm. <laughs> have anything to do with, um, who are excited by the theater and who say, wow, this, this I actually have never gone to see just a regular play before. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. I had no idea that it would be, one, accessible to me as an audience member in terms of just content. You know, if, is this interesting? Yes, it is. And two, that it's entertaining. Mm -hmm. And that's it, it's a wonderful way to be a car, part of the community. We're going to be back in a moment. We're going to take our first break. We're talking with Lucy Howard Lockamy. We're talking about the theater here in Clinton and some of the things that she's been doing. We'll be back in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to us on WCLN Radio, simulcast with Star Vision TV and Star TV, Channel 16. The name of the show is We Should Know. I want to thank you for listening today. We've got a wonderful guest. I want to get a shout out very quickly to a lot of folks who talk about us on the radio. WCLN, that whole crew in the morning, uh, Grandpa Pat, Pat, Nolan Z, The L Man. A show that comes out on Saturday afternoon and literally thousands of people will listen to on Saturday afternoon called Boogie Shoes Radio Network with Robert Stroud. We thank Robert for kind of promoting our show and, and speaking about us and I've always got to kind of give him a little retaliation and, and comment uh, to him. He's doing a great job. Also Don Smith with The Country Store which is a unique show. Don mentions us over 50 years in radio Don has so we thank him for uh, speaking our name frequently in Wayne Weeks with the Southern Gospel Hour and of course Tommy the Fly with all he does down there and and we cannot leave uh, Nicole out. Nicole does her introduction for our show each and every week. And it's such a professional. We thank her uh, for what she does. We have Lucy Lockamy with us. It's Lucy Howard Lockamy, wife of Justin Lockamy, who's an attorney. Uh, Lucy, you're an actor. You're a director. You have graduate credentials in the field. You teach theater. Uh, it's like your life has just kind of unfolded. And listening to you on our first segment talk about Lucy, it's like mm -hmm. it's happening as you envisioned it to happen. You're living your passion. Would that be a correct statement? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it would. It's it's interesting because uh, when when I graduated from graduate school, all my um, <coughs> classmates were going to New York and. Chicago and LA and they said where are you going Lucy I said I'm going back home mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to Clinton and it was a it was a very conscious decision to move back knowing how it would affect my involvement in theater mm -hmm. because while there are lots of opportunities in the, in the very large cities let's say New York City mm -hmm. and and it's very possible that if I had gone there, I, I could have gotten roles and been very, very successful in theater, let's say. But statistically, most people who go as actors to New York City end up waiting tables. And oftentimes, that's all they do. Um, 
waiting tables and audition hoping for a big break you know for 10 years and then 10 years later they say well I'm done I can't do this anymore and they may move back home to their respective hometowns but I thought you know what I can I can have more control over my involvement of theater Mm -hmm. I don't have to I, I don't have to sit back and hope that somebody will pick me I pick myself and so that that's what happened is that I wanted to actually immerse myself in theater and not just audition. Mm-hmm. And so in the opportunities that opened themselves up here were much more tangible because I knew people and I could actually create a theater company mm-hmm. and and bring on actors and bring on technicians and and I know several directors who I, I, I want to work with and, and employ and and that's just been incredible it's something that I didn't realize would be within my reach at this point you, you find that as, as I look at the field of arts mm-hmm. and listening to what you're saying and you know others as I do that have opened this field up in, in the uh, schools of dance uh, mm-hmm. several schools here teach dance and and these folks have gone away come back Right to this area, mm-hmm. and had very and have very successful businesses. Do you see your business going in that direction and becoming the uh, kind of uh, theatrical moment for Clinton? And with that, I want you to go ahead and talk a bit about the Old Bluff Theater, what mm-hmm. that is, and explain that because that's where we're headed. I want to I want to cover that conversation in, in that question as well. So I yeah. just lay that out yes. and chat about. Yeah, that. let me let me dissect this. Okay. Yes, I I do. Um, I, I do. All I see our theater company as doing is just joining in with what a, what a, what else is out there. Mm-hmm. Joining in with the dance companies and joining in with the community theater and just because the presence of even more artistic opportunities in Clinton is only going to bolster support for all the other pre-existing companies mm-hmm. because if people are aware of theater and of the performing arts for one company, they're gonna be aware of theater and performing arts in other companies. So the more performing companies we have in this town, I think the better and for everyone. Uh, so there's that. Mm-hmm. And then, so the name of my theater company is called the Old Bluff Theater Company. Right. And, and so I had told you I wanted to have control of my involvement in the theater after grad school and I knew that I wanted to create a theater company because I've always wanted to do that um, and give give the local audience just something different, not something any better, but just something different. Um, and I, I would never call myself a musical aficionado. So one of the things we don't do at Old Bluff is musicals. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they are wonderful. Musicals have their merit and their place and everybody loves them. I love musicals. But there's also so much out there besides musicals, just straight plays that I have more experience in that I want to uh, present to the community. And so that's what we're that's what we're about. Old Bluff Theater Company is is dedicated to to producing thought provoking and powerful theater in Simpson County and and really highlighting the talents of the local artist. So everything's local with where, us. Where is physically Old Bluff Theater? It's, ah, it's, yes, there's the that's a phys- physical location. And you've got something coming up this week uh, yeah. this, mm-hmm. this going, that you want to mention too. So let's mm-hmm. get that in and, okay. and get the contact information because I think folks may have heard the name or they may not. And that, that some folks may be listening to this program and going, wow, I didn't realize that was much going on in Clinton right. with, yeah. with theater. Yeah. So tell us more about where we're located, <laughs> how we could reach you or mm-hmm. some of your folks to, to get involved. And you know, as as a not necessarily somebody involved in theater, but just as a participant to be part of it. Right. So, so we don't have a physical address. Um, we're more like an old timey uh, traveling You're trip, everywhere. really. Yeah, yeah. You could <laughs> you be. You want to consider that? Yes. Um, so we don't have a physical address. We go from place to place and just kind of make it our own. So the first performance we did at the community theater mm-hmm. in their great venue, and then the second performance we did in the old Ace Hardware building downtown, yeah. and we transformed it into a 
black box theater mm -hmm. space, a really intimate venue, which mm -hmm. was exciting. Yeah. And then this event uh, is coming up Thursday, September 12th, mm -hmm. and it's called A Night of Comedy. This coming Thursday? This coming Thursday, Thursday. Mm -hmm. yes. T now, ticket ticket sales have ended, but if, you, if the audience hears this yeah. and really wants to go, well, we still have a few seats available, what? so please, uh, we have an email, oldblufftheater at gmail.com. Okay. Um, contact number is 910-379-8232. Okay. So email us, call us, even if you show up the door, maybe we'll let you in. Um, they've got a good contact. They just need to contact you and you'll work with them. To get exactly, them in. Be because we do have, it's, we're, we're having... Um, we're having hors d'oeuvres and wine and beer yeah, yeah. and entertainment. So we just need to make sure the reason we sold tickets ahead of time is to make sure we got all the yeah, all yeah. the appropriate things before right. the show started. Now how much are tickets? They are thirty dollars for an individual okay. and fifty dollars for a couple. And it is it is our fundraiser. Okay. And a laugh out loud fundraiser. Wonderful. We market it. So yeah. uh, so so the whole gist of it is that we want the audience to pick our spring show. Mm -hmm. And the way I came up with doing that was making it a fundraiser and trying to just get more more interest in this company mm -hmm. by, by giving the audience a, a hand in mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. in, in the show selection. So we are presenting three separate comedy scenes mm -hmm. that night. And it's gonna be a stage reading. And a stage reading is just people sitting in stools up on stage, uh, they, they'll move a little bit. Um, but basically they have their scripts and they just, cr it's kind of like, um, you know, old timey radio show mm -hmm. when, when they would read stories and have comedies mm -hmm. on the radio. It has a feel of that. And then after that, the audience is gonna pick which one they want to see for the spring show. And that's what we'll do. So, so it's a really exciting fundraiser. I'm really interested to well, see. I can, I can sense your, your passion for what you do. And I think one of the things that is interesting here is that mm -hmm. this is another alternative for folks that they can experience something in Clinton without driving 60, 70 oh, miles yeah. somewhere, and it's local. And folks mm -hmm. will possibly know some of the folks on stage doing the acting. Correct? Oh, yes, they're all local. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, they're, and, they're, and I'm sure some people, the audience will say, well, my goodness, I didn't know he could act. Absolutely. <laughs> and then, Absolutely. Um, and so that's lovely to see as well. And, and I, that's a perfect example of what I've experienced with a lot of folks after they go to one of the community plays or, or, or participate, they walk out and they go, I never thought I would see people there. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, uh, it was a so while back, I was at the uh, community theater here, and uh, in my background, obviously, has been with emergency services, training and stuff with fire departments, and all of a sudden, I look on the stage, and there's a firefighter, right. and he's an actor, and I'm thinking, <laughs> And, you know, I never knew. Yeah. I'm thinking, wow. And he did a great job. Uh -huh. I mean, he, he came across just as a character, and, and, and it's amazing. So, you know, encourage people to do that. Now, give oh, us that yeah. number again. We want to make sure we get out. Yes, 910-379-8232. Uh, 8232. Uh -huh. 379-8232. That's right. And we have the email address, which is oldblufftheater at gmail.com. Okay. And that's O-L-D-B-L-U-F-F. -F. T H E A T R E at gmail.com. Okay. And mm -hmm. for our TV viewers, we will try to put that at the logo at the bottom oh, right, of the screen yeah. uh, as they're looking at this show. So we want to kind of follow this train of thought. And uh, of course, in just a second, we're going to come back from a break. But I want to kind of set the stage for hopefully what we're going to talk about when we come back a little more in depth about theater itself and what that is. So uh, we're going to take a break now, Lucy. So when we come back uh, in a few minutes, I want to kind of give folks some credits and give some information out here now. So we're going to take a break, folks. But before we go to break, let me ask you, uh, if you would please continue to send your emails to us at we should know edu at gmail.com. That's we should know edu at gmail.com. I've had a lot of folks ask me about YouTube. Yes, the show is uploaded to YouTube. Normally that's done on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday after the airing. So go to YouTube, just type in We Should Know EDU and you'll be able to see most of all of our shows has been up uploaded. We'll be back in a moment with Lucy Lockby in the theater. 
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Name of the show is We Should Know. Thank you, Nicole, for your wonderful introduction each and every week. We're coming to you again on WCLN Radio. We're also simulcast with Star Vision TV and also Star TV on Channel 16, 2.30 to 3.30, Tuesday, 7 p.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Summation in the Samson Weekly Newspaper. We picked that up on Thursday. Kind of get a brief of what went on in case you miss any of those other mediums. Lucy Lockham is our guest today. Lucy, uh, the Old Bluff Theater, uh, actor, director, master's degree, teaches students in acting and theater. Lucy, um, I want to read something. You tell me who the author is, and I guess everybody else will know what, who this is out there. All the world is a stage. All the world is a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances. That is William Shakespeare. Absolutely. <laughs> and the interesting thing with that is, is that what we're talking about in the sense of theater has so many practical applications. Mm -hmm. On break, we were talking about uh, folks that, even salespeople that sell whatever. Uh, acting mm -hmm. can be a part of that. Some of our greatest, highly most recognized politicians, one everybody will remember, a guy by the name of President Ronald Reagan. Mm -hmm. Guess what his background was? You know, come on, this, right. these are the kinds of things that I want to tie real world experiences into the importance of uh, folks understanding what theater is. Mm -hmm. And when we look at Shakespeare, most folks seem to have adopted their understanding of theater from those times sitting in classrooms, uh, listening to English instructors, read stuff, and we're thinking, really, we gotta go through this. So mm -hmm. let's kind of put things in perspective. Let's yeah. talk about theater and talk about what theater is. When we hear the word theater, you just mentioned it while ago as you talked about location is important, but it doesn't have to be a continuous physical address, does it? Oh, gosh, no. So no. what is a theater when we think of the word theater? By definition, we know it's a location, but it could be many things. Well, if you break down theater into its simplest definition, really it's someone performing for someone else. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. So it has nothing to do with location. It has nothing to do with how many people are in the crowd. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's watching, Someone on stage, that is an act of theater. Um, and with my students, we, I, we had about a 20 minute long conversation about, well, Miss Lockamy, is a juggler, is that theater? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, is so and so theater? But um, anyway, we won't get into that. Mm -hmm. That could be tedious. But, well, yeah. um, we, we may lose me, and that would <laughs> right. be part of the problem. So like, yeah, let's not lose anybody because, because theater is so accessible. Theater is so fun. It's it's for everyone. That's mm -hmm. how it really, really used to be. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I think is very important for people to realize is because the whole purpose of theater, Shakespeare said that, that theater, theater's purpose is to hold a mirror up to humanity mm -hmm. so that we see the virtues and we see the vices. And we see, when we see people on stage navigating through their lives, mm -hmm. it tells, it gives us a better understanding of how to navigate through ours. And, and that's incredible. It, it, it's a form of communion. When you see, instead of film, mm -hmm. you can't, you're not, ex, you're not experiencing the same energy uh, between actor and audience if you watch a film. Mm -hmm. Because they've done that months and months ago. Mm -hmm. They've wrapped already. But when you go see a live theater performance, everything is immediate. And that energy and that feeling of, of being with other people, watching other people, experiencing this common story together, that, that's, that's the purpose. And, and that's what's so incredible about theater. It, do you see theater as, as a sense of kind of a collaborative effort between the, the audience and the person that's, that's on that stage? I mean, does mm -hmm. the, as an actor, as an actress yourself, do you get a sense of, um, I guess, emotion from the audience? I mean, are, are you, is the audience in you engaged when you're going through your lines? Do yes. you pick up something and, and kind of recognize that I'm really getting involved in this even more? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. And like I said, theater cannot exist without an audience. It cannot exist. And the, the actor will always pick up on the energy that's given off by the audience. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a necessity. Well, and, and I think acting itself is something that, that a lot of folks have asked me, you know, if you're doing something, uh, if you're going to do a show on theater, kind of ask these kinds of questions. D does everyone have a sense of actor inside of them? 
or is that something that's just some have talent, some don't, some's learned and some's not? How, how does that work? Well, I, I think it's, I think it's a combination. But I think what's more important is that no, I don't see either you have it or you don't. Right. I don't, I don't see it like that. I think if you do want to be an actor who actually has a career, you do need training. You do need to know how to use your voice and how to use your body on stage and how to access emotion and, and those technical things. But, but, but one of my explorations here is that is I've been working with people, local actors, but they're actors now, mm -hmm. but that didn't mean that they were actors before. And if you, if you know what to say to an actor and you know mm -hmm. how to properly direct them, into being able to to really get into their character mm -hmm. then then they can do it. it it doesn't matter if they have a degree in it or not and that's what's so lovely to watch you know we hear words like improvisation and, uh -huh. and improv and various kinds of things that that relate to acting um, how how do you tie it to someone that may be listening to the show and we're talking about theater and all of a sudden their mind is already somewhere in a world thinking well this is way too you know risque or upscale or you know it's just not something I want to listen to how do you mm -hmm. tie it out to them to say it's important for you to understand this about acting and theater and what it could mean to you mm -hmm. and, and, and actually enriching their lives oh yeah and the first thing I'll say is they just need to come to theater. Mm -hmm. uh, I say that to anyone. If you haven't been to see a piece of theater, just say, you know what, I'll try it once and then see what happens. Most of the time they'll realize, hey, you know, this is for me. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it's, it's much more accessible than people think. As I was saying to you earlier, we, we don't realize historically with the advent of film mm -hmm. and how easy it is to you know, people used to go out and see theater. It didn't matter who they were, what class they were in, what racial um, groups they were in. If there was a touring troupe that came through town, well, they're not going to watch TV that night. One, because it doesn't exist yet. They're going to go see the theater. Yeah, they're going to go right. see. So, so this is really a new concept that is lofty and that it's only for the academics. And mm -hmm. this is a really new concept, which is crazy and bizarre to me. Um, but what was I saying? It's, well, one of the things I think is we need to look at too is that historically we can look back even back in the '60s. You know, there was and I was mentioning this mm -hmm. to you on break. There was a, a troupe of folks that went around that were were actors and actresses, and they went into the public schools. And, mm -hmm. and as I recall, and and some of our listeners, please email us or let us know. I know I hear from you. Um, let us know. It, it was something like the saltine players or the saldine players or what have you. But they uh -huh. would come to the schools, and people in my age bracket will probably remember that, but they brought a very unique experience because you would see something that was just totally uh, different than anything you'd ever seen. And you got to understand, well, really way back there in that uh, period, mm -hmm. not necessarily everybody didn't have a TV or some kind of device. So that got you back to the fundamentals of communication. And I think that's kind of important. Yeah. So as we transition that, thinking about acting, let's, there's so many parts to theater. Mm -hmm. The play itself. Right. When you think about theater, then you think about a play. What's different when we say, okay, here's a play versus the theater? Theater's more everything from location to the general dynamic of it, but what is a play? If A play really is just uh, a s script on paper. Mm -hmm. it's, it's words. That may be something that your husband had written. Right, yeah, yeah. So until you have the actors, until you have the performer performing what's on the paper, it's... It's not theater. Mm -hmm. It's just words on mm -hmm. a page. Um, if there's if there's a uh, someone, I say a high school kid or, or somebody out there that maybe is even retired and they're, mm -hmm. they're listening to this and they think, well, you know, I'm, I'm not in. Don't really think I want to act, but you know, I I do have some ideas on on paper. I'd like to see something kind of acted out. That as you mentioned a while ago, this this happening now in society. Can they scribble down some things on a paper and or maybe call you and say, look, here's what I've been thinking would be a great play. I mean, do you have to be a playwright to start the idea of a play? Oh, no. <laughs> no, in fact, there I can think of three different playwrights I know who have won huge awards first time writing a play. Absolutely. 
if you if you have a story and you effectively communicate it and it has heart it's going to be wonderful and because that's what it's all about just telling a story how many different plays have you presented with the old bluff theater that now that you represent is the one that's coming up this week is this one of how many and what do you project on your quarterly or annual basis mm -hmm. that you're going to do well this will be our third performance mm -hmm. our first one we did last fall yeah a year ago mm -hmm. and then we did a spring show called doubt mm -hmm. it was an incredible incredible play it's kind of a psychological thriller mm -hmm. And so this will be our third performance. I'm right now. I'm thinking two shows a year, only because I have a young child at home mm -hmm. and a job, and mm -hmm. you know there are lots of things in my life that I don't think I could handle right. more. Right. Uh, because it and people in the theater will know this and chuckle, but it takes up so much of your life. So you better like it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, to actually involve yourself, mm -hmm. not being an audience member, of mm -hmm. course, but actually participating in the theater, being acting, I'm acting as producer, director, theater manager, pub public, pu I'm working on publicity. Mm -hmm. I have so many different roles that, yeah, if I were in a bigger place, I could probably employ different people to do them. But... But it's exciting being on those roles and being able to kind of really, truly mold and shape a theater company into what you'd like it to be. One of the things I, I want to talk about when we come back from this break uh, that we're fixing to take is, is talk a little bit about the importance of community involvement. Mm -hmm. If folks feel like theater is important, how do they get involved? So just hang with us and we're going to take another mm -hmm. break. And uh, folks, we'll be back in a moment. We're talking about theater and the importance of it to the community, to you, to your way of life, uh, and, and your passion. Maybe you want to participate. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. The name of the show is We Should Know. We're coming up on our last segment. We hope you've been listening to us today. Hope you've been enjoying this as much as we have here at the studio as we've talked about the theater, acting, and the whole process of that. We're very fortunate here in Clinton, North Carolina, to have folks like Lucy Howard Lockamy. Lucy, thank you for being with us today. You're, uh, I started to say you're a noted uh, actress and producer and director, <laughs> but you've been, you've been to Nebraska to get a <laughs> master's degree in theater, which is uh, something uh, that takes quite a bit of dedication. You've, you've You've told us about going to New York and and uh, and actually performing to get into that master's program. Again, for most people, just thinking about going to New York is a task within itself, much <laughs> less performing before several hundred people. So as we look at that and talk about theater and what you're doing with the Old Bluff Theater, I want to mention that several times. Give us that number again for the Old Bluff Theater. Yes, 910-379-8232. Uh, okay. Uh, and of course, you know, we've talked about your background and you grew up here. Uh, Tim Howard's mm -hmm. your father. You're married now. Got a, a beautiful uh, baby that, that that you look after. And this is this acting thing for you, and this theater is a passion point for you. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the history. We've talked. Uh, we actually quoted William Shakespeare. Is that not interesting? Ooh, so we've kind of done our part. Here. And this last <laughs> segment, I want to talk about theater today, and I want to talk about it from the sense of of what it is, who it is, and where it's going. So let's start with that part, theater today, and in your mindset and, and let's kind of focus it for this general part of the state southeastern north carolina i mean uh -huh. granted we'd love to have folks drive down from raleigh chapel Hill, wherever to come to the theater wow. but for this part mm -hmm. of the state what is theater for this part of the state and what do you think it means for this part of the state what's the depth of that didn't see that coming did you <laughs> <laughs> okay okay um <clears throat> well i would say currently mm -hmm. The theater in this part of the state is good. Mm -hmm. We there are some great theater companies in southeastern North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's a theater of the South in mm -hmm. Wilson, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, there is a lot of theater in Wilmington, so it's definitely there and it's definitely thriving. I would say, Sampson County. I bet folks at the community theater would agree. We would love to see more people <laughs> come mm -hmm. out um, to both the community theater and my theater company. Because really, without community support, we don't exist. We just don't exist. In fact, m my company, we're a nonprofit. And if we don't get support from the community, we actually will bottom out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. You know, fall saying, no. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I, 
I think theater will always persist, no matter, you know, sometimes, especially with technology, yeah. some people would way much prefer staying home and watching Will and Grace reruns than actually, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. getting out of their pajamas and going to see a theater performance. Mm -hmm. And mainly probably because they don't know about it. And, you know, sometimes when people don't know about things, they tend to shy away from them. Mm -hmm. When maybe if they just actually went just to see, it wouldn't seem as um, inaccessible and un unapproachable. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, we've had like mystery theaters here in, in Clinton area. We've had various kinds of theater uh, mm -hmm. going on. And, and what we're talking about here is that kind of in-depth thing. And a question, it, it's a quote I read uh, in, when I was doing some research on this. Does uh, theater actually develop the culture or does theater reflect the culture? Uh, or does it work both ways? Oh, both ways, definitely. I love that question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It will, theater will always reflect the society that is currently going with the playwright, mm -hmm. always. Mm -hmm. And, you know, oftentimes, I mean, think about, let's say the 60s, think about the musical hair. Absolutely. Think about the riots it provoked, you know, with, with the nudity and the anti-war mm -hmm. sentiments mm -hmm. and um, it, its comments on segregation. And I mean, that was huge. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, theater can cause revolutions and I think dare I say theater should cause revolutions it should it should always it should always um, you know make the person think make the audience think make the audience continue to be human and continually question what it is to have a human experience mm -hmm. and how to make the common human experience better and theater can do that the depth of emotion mm -hmm. in theater, as, as you just were describing, is very important. So as a director, mm -hmm. and, and you've, you've done the acting part, but as a director, how do you zero that in uh, when you're looking at doing a play? For example, the ones coming up this week. Is there certain people that you know that fit, just would be a perfect fit? And how persuasive do you have to be in saying to these, quote, volunteers? Because obviously, you know, they don't have a someone that they're working out a contract with. But mm -hmm. how persuasive, how hard is it to get these folks to step forward? Well, they say directing is 90% casting. And if you cast the right person in the role who can, who can do and who can meet the demands of the character, mm -hmm. you've got it. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of auditioning, it's incredibly hard. There, um, there's a very small acting community in Clinton and it's a very dedicated wonderful group but I'm sure we could all, we would all love to see it expand and it doesn't take much like I was saying earlier you know if you've, uh, if you, if you've ever been interested in acting or if you think I don't know maybe maybe I could do it then come audition and come contact people contact me um, the more people we can get to be involved in any way the better the better experience it's going to be for everyone in this county so so the who part of, of my question mm -hmm. as to it relates to where theater is going today that who question could be you it could be the person that we're that's listening to us today mm -hmm. they could be the who part the who meaning you know what kind of play we do is as a director do you have an idea of, of a play as we talked about it could be just a few scribbling notes that somebody has mm -hmm. how much can you get into the reflection of the culture when you're doing a play because we've got a very as, as everybody knows, as we sit here this week, we've got a lot of emotions nationally, mm -hmm. statewide, right. internationally, uh, everything from the potential of wars throughout the, the country to uh, issues related to education to taxation. There's so many. Uh, as a director, can you zero in on that and say, look, here's something I want to look at as a topic? Oh, yes, yes. Um, we any show I pick I'm, I'm going to want it to have meaning and I'm going to want it to mean something and so that's always in my mind because that's part of our um, organization statement our philosophy. Even if it's a comedy. Even oh right comedy. oh yeah comedies can have plenty of meaning can, comedies of course. can reflect dramatic roles. Then. Oh yes yes yeah. comedies aren't just always knee slapping yeah. things they've got meat to them as well mm. um, so when we look at that as, as a political kind of process, uh -huh. and not so much political party, but the political process as, as, as it relates to cultural think, 
that's important for you. And again, I'm getting back to that thing of should folks call you and say, look, have you thought about doing a play with so-and-so or some other kind of process? I mean, do you like ideas coming to you? Yes, I do. I do. And I like volunteers yeah. and um, writers and and um, somebody who said, gosh, I've always wanted to learn how to use lights and yeah. be a lighting designer. And, oh, yeah, the more... And, and I'm probably on repeat here, but the more the local audience can participate in, in whatever way is, is only going to be for, for the betterment of the cultural presence in this community. Um, as many folks know, one of, one of the two biggest fears uh, that exist in life, I am told, that mm-hmm. is supposedly statistics to back this up. One of those, obviously, uh, actually there's three. One of them, I think, is death, obviously. The other is separation or divorce. And, of course, the third one, not necessarily in, in order of uh, level of fear. The other is speaking before people. Does mm-hmm. acting help a person improve their communication skills if they are someone that needs to communicate with people, whether they're a teacher or whether they're a a politician or whatever, can can acting help them with that? Oh, yes. Yes. (laughs) Yes. I mean, it it helps you to learn how to use your body. Mm -hmm. You know, this, when you're talking this clearly, what I'm doing here, just waving my hands, clearly isn't natural looking and it's weird. Right. Right. Well, maybe somebody has that natural tendency to do that. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's a politician Um, and an acting coach would come in and say, why are you waving your hands? Mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, absolutely. But yes, acting can teach you how to move naturally, how mm-hmm. to speak naturally, how to speak and make a point, um, and, and just have general self-confidence as a person. You know, building confidence, knowing that that you or Sally or Joe, they're all great people, and so they should stand up and be proud of themselves and stand tall and speak publicly. So to the person that would maybe would say that acting is trying to be something you're not, it's just the opposite of that. It's trying to be something that you are. Oh, yeah. I've never seen it as, as divorcing self from character. Mm-hmm. You always put yourself in a character. Yes, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I want to give you a, a few seconds to kind of do a wrap-up because we've talked about so much and we've mm-hmm. just kind of touched the surface, uh, Lucy, with a lot of this stuff. But I, I want to just kind of give you a few seconds to wrap up uh, here. I, anything we've missed or anything you want to say, you might want to mention the number again or what have you, but just kind of wrap up uh, on our whole conversation. Yeah, sure. Well, I just encourage the natives and well, not the natives, but everyone yeah. of Simpson yeah. County to be aware of our company, Old Bluff mm-hmm. Theater Company. Mm-hmm. You can find us on Facebook. Our, we have a Facebook page. We're going to be getting a website soon. Mm-hmm. Uh, Old Bluff Theater at gmail.com. Okay. Phone number 910-379-8232. And also highlight the the fundraising event we're having on Thursday, September 12th, a night of comedy. Coming up this week. That's right. So, and if, and to get with me ASAP. Yeah. Using that contact information if, if you would like to go. And those tickets usually are sellout at at the Mm -hmm. the shows you've been to. Oh, yeah, space is very limited. Yeah, Mm -hmm. so um, I, I, you know, I can't extend the deadline too far, but I just, but I do want to to let in as many people Absolutely. in as who want to go. Because here we are with them, two days out, so we'll have them mm-hmm. to call you. Give us a number one more time mm-hmm. before we have to go off. 910-379-8232. Well, we certainly appreciate you being with us today and taking time to come in and talking about the theater. It's a very interesting subject. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been talking with uh, Lucy Lockamy, Lucy Howard Lockamy. Talking about theater, we thank you for listening. Coming up, a lot of possibilities for theater. We've got a lot of holidays coming up. So give her a call. Look forward to seeing you again next week on the radio. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question or comment regarding this or any episode, please send your email questions and or comments to jwsimmonsedu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday afternoon beginning at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know. 